welcome to Sectors Up Close. I'm Elena Casas. Our focus today is on cryptocurrencies and our guest is Phil Palumbo, Chief Investment Officer at Palumbo Wealth Management. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has reignited the debate over cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. The world's most popular digital currency is hovering around its highs for the year. After a volatile start to 2022, it surged by about 25 percent since the invasion began. Compare that to the performance of this safe haven asset, gold, which spiked just after the invasion but has now come back down and is mostly unchanged since late February, although it outperformed Bitcoin. BlackRock CEO Larry Fink said last week the Russia-Ukraine war could accelerate digital currencies as a tool to settle international transactions. And market players have cited signs of a new wave of adoption of crypto by institutional investors and financial firms whose interest over the past few years has fueled crypto's journey to the mainstream. But the widespread adoption faces opposition from regulators who fear they will be used to circumvent sanctions or other laws and by environmentalists who decry their energy usage. Phil, hi. So what do you think? Has the Russia-Ukraine conflict really changed the prospects for cryptocurrency? Investors have to take Bitcoin serious now. So when I think about what happened with these, what's going on with the sanctions with Russia, my view is Russia has reserves all around the world. Two thirds, one third of them is between Russia and China. The other two thirds are in other countries. And when other countries sees what happened to Russia with the sanctions, they're saying to themselves, "If what if this happens to me one day? And should I be so dependent on the reserve currency, the dollar, and have my reserves in all, central, all of the central banks all around the world? So because of that, you're going to start to see other countries open their eyes to the idea of digital currencies, is what Larry Fink had said and you had said before. So I buy into that idea. And I was a skeptic on crypto, but now I'm opening my eyes a bit more as I think it's time for investors to really take it serious in terms of Bitcoin. But when it comes to reserve currencies, will cryptocurrencies ever really have the liquidity or the necessary take up by central banks? First of all, there's 10,000 cryptocurrencies in the world. If anybody has a shot, it's Bitcoin. And it really depends on the regulation. As you can only imagine, Central banks around the world, they want to protect their currency, especially the dollar, because we're so dominating as far as the reserve currency. So it really depends on where regulation goes. If regulations in favor of investors and taking away all the bad hackers that we're reading about, that could be favorable for the industry because long term investors now can take a position which ultimately will create demand because there's limited supply, which will drive the price higher. So there is a chance that that can happen at some point in the future. But the Ukraine-Russia conflict has given Western governments a much stronger motivation to regulate more strictly, hasn't it? Because they're concerned Russia could use cryptocurrency to get around sanctions. Absolutely. And we've seen that already, right? So they're trying to, you know, Coinbase, they held back from, holding, from, from any type of transactions going on with Russia. So we've seen that there's opportunities for countries like Russia, who's being sanctioned, to use cryptocurrency in their favor. So like I said before, you know, regulation is the known unknown. And that's what we're all skeptical about. And that's why I always say from the beginning that cryptocurrency is complete speculation. However, Bitcoin has really built a strong name for themselves over the past 12 years. There have been no breaches on their um, on their on their uh, systems in terms of the, the blockchain is concerned. So it's I think it's really time to, to take a look at, at cryptocurrency and take it serious as an investor. But as a serious investment, there are a few other concerns, aren't there, if you're going to put your money into this? One, of course, is theft. And we keep hearing about major breaches of some blockchains. And on the other hand, environmentalists say, uh, well, an independent study said in 2019 that Bitcoin has this using the same amount of energy as the country of the Netherlands, which is enormous. So what about these downsides? Yeah, it's a concern, especially now we're trying to move away from that type of stuff. So. The, the Ronin hack that happened, and I said it before, there are 10,000 cryptocurrencies around the world using blockchain, right? So just like the 1999.com, there were, there were these dot-com companies, there were hundreds of them, if not thousands of them, and they all created. So there are going to be many cryptocurrencies where there are going to be these hack issues just because there are so many out there. And that's why I alluded to before, Bitcoin has the best track record, 12 years of no breaches. So if you're going to be an investor, that's what you want to look at. 
for system stability. But just understand, it's still speculative, right? Because we don't know what the regulations are going to do to cryptocurrency world in general. Again, most likely central banks would want to put, put in place regulation that protects their currency, which makes sense from my standpoint. But overall, Bitcoin is for real. It's just a question of what happens in the future. If you're advising clients to get into cryptocurrency now, then how should they go about it? Right now, I am not advising any clients to take a position in cryptocurrency. This is something that after being off its high 30 percent and looking on what's going on in the world, there's potential for globalization decoupling. Like we just talked about before, other countries now saying to themselves, what's an alternative to the reserve currency? So these are reasons why we think that can create some demand in Bitcoin. Ultimately, there's limited supply, which can drive price up. The question is, as you just said, what's the best vehicle to, to take the position in? And we are not sure that yet. We are researching that at this moment. Thanks so much for that, Phil Palumbo, CIO of Palumbo Wealth Management. Well, before I go, here are some of the top stories in this space. Cryptocurrency exchange Binance says it's recruiting over 100 positions in the UAE as it shapes Dubai's regulations around virtual assets. Binance's links with the UAE have deepened in recent months as the country tries to style itself as the world's hub for digital assets. Binance CEO Changpeng Zhou is a regular visitor to Dubai and bought a home there last year. The company is also helping the city's financial hub develop a virtual asset ecosystem. But the UAE's crypto push comes amid concerns about the use of cryptocurrencies for money laundering, and it was put on a grey list of jurisdictions by the Financial Action task force, a global watchdog. A senior Bank of Japan official said the Group of Seven must speed up the creation of a common framework to regulate digital currencies. The head of the bank's payments department, Kazushige Kamiyama, warned they could upend the digital settlement system and be used to evade sanctions. He said policymakers must act quickly to update rules that do not take into account the growing presence of digital currencies. From April, the Bank of Japan will begin the second phase of experiments on issuing a central bank digital currency. The BOJ has said a decision on whether to issue one could come by 2026. And finally, there's been no update from blockchain project Ronin since it said on Tuesday hackers stole cryptocurrency worth almost $615 million from its systems in what would be one of the biggest crypto heists on record. Ronin is used to power the online game Axie Infinity, which is the largest NFT brand by all-time sales. It said the hacker used stolen private keys or passwords to make off with 174,000 Ether tokens and 25 million USD tokens about a week before it was detected. Last August, hackers behind the biggest ever coin heist returned nearly all of the $610 million they stole from Poly Network. And that's your roundup of the cryptocurrency sector. I'm Elena Casas, and this is Reuters.